Do you feel stuck with your PhD thesis or your research papers? Do you feel like, you know, in the last six, 12 months, you really haven't made as much progress as you wanted to, which, you know, makes you feel anxious, makes you feel overwhelmed because there are deadlines um, looming. And, you know, as a result, you may be kind of just avoiding writing. You're, you're even postponing it because, you know, there are other tasks that you need to do. But at the end of the day, you're kind of paralyzed. You're not taking any action, even though you know that you have really good research ideas. You know that your paper can be good. Maybe you even can write very well, but it's just that you aren't writing. You're just paralyzed and your papers aren't moving forward and your thesis isn't moving forward. So in this video, I want to give you the four causes of this writing paralysis and show you how to solve it so that, you know, in the next um, six months, you can write three papers um, for good journals or finish your thesis if that's what you're doing. Now, if you're new here, my name is Mario Kiczkowek and I'm the founder of Academic English Now, where we empower PhD students and researchers to uh, publish research papers in Scopus Index journals. So I want to talk about the four causes of paralysis, the four causes of inaction, why you aren't making as much progress as you should be um, with your writing, with your papers, why you aren't publishing as much as you want to, as you're capable of, because you have good research ideas, maybe you can write as well, but you just aren't doing it. So the four causes are, are these. The first one is what I call the comparison curse, and I'll dive deeper into each of them in just a second, so you definitely want to stick around for the whole video. But the first one is comparison curse, which basically means constantly comparing yourself to others. Number two is setting unrealistic goals, setting goals that you cannot achieve, that are too difficult for your current self. And the third one is perfectionist delusion. So you're basically deluding yourself that, uh, you know, you, your work needs to be perfect for you to submit it. OK, uh, and you feel like your work is never perfect enough to be submitted and to be finished. And then the fourth one really is just lack of self-discipline, right? Um, you're looking for motivation to do your writing, but you should be you should be developing self-discipline. So let's dive deeper into each of those four causes, okay? And show you how you can tackle it so that in the next couple of months, you can start writing and submitting papers to better journals. So the first one really is comparison curse. So what, what most of us end up doing is we kind of compare ourselves to the top 1% of people out there. And this is even more of a curse right now with all the social media, where your social media newsfeed is just flooded with success stories. And everybody seems to be a millionaire. Everybody seems to be driving a Lamborghini, living in a fancy penthouse in, in Dubai or having a house at a beach in a beautiful, on a beautiful Caribbean island. Everyone seems to be publishing 10 papers every year in Nature and Great Journals, right? And, you know, this constant comparison with all these people really lowers your self-esteem. It makes you feel like you're inadequate, right? And it also stops you from taking action because instead you devote your energy to looking at these beautiful, rich, successful people and, you know, you aren't there. You aren't even close to that. And as a result, you kind of, you start feeling like there's no point in taking action because I will never get there, right? Um, so, so what you need to do instead is to compare yourself to your past self. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, you, you want to start logging in your activities. For example, how much you write on a daily basis, right? What papers you've published, where, what impact factor and stuff like this. And then start comparing yourself, right? Rather than compete against these uh, idealized people and goals, you know, you want to compete against yourself and you want to try to become 1% better every single day, right? So if you wrote 250 words yesterday, we'll try to write 255 today, okay? And just compare yourself to your former self and keep logs of it so that when you look at what you achieved six months later, you will be amazed how much progress you, you've achieved because you will see the starting point and you will see where you went to six months later 
and you'll see the progress and you'll feel so much better. Instead, if you, you know, continue working for six months, but then still compare yourself to those people on Instagram, those people publishing in nature, you'll still feel inadequate and unhappy. So always compare yourself to your former self, right? So that's the first cause of unhappiness and inaction, the comparison curse. The second one really is unrealistic goals, you know? So it's setting goals that are just way too difficult for your current self or setting goals that have unrealistic time frames. So maybe you can achieve that goal, but you need more time for it, right? So if you do that, then you're basically setting yourself for inevitable failure, really, you know? And this leads to constant stream of like negative feedback, which means that you develop an increasingly more negative image of yourself, right? Because, you know, I want you to think of it, of, of this um, loop, basically right so you have you have your beliefs right what, what you believe to be true about yourself about reality about what can be achieved right and those beliefs influence your actions so if you don't believe that you can publish in a better journal or so that you can become a better writer then you're not going to take that action right and of course taking more action or less action influences the results that we have and that gives us feedback which then further reinforces our beliefs, right? So it's a loop. Beliefs, actions, results, feedback. So you need to start with the beliefs and you need to develop better beliefs and setting more realistic goals will lead you to take more action and you will get the results, you will achieve your goals, which will give you positive feedback. And then, you know, you will enhance the beliefs that you have and you'll start feeling, yeah, no, I can actually write 500 words every day. So let's now try to write 550, right? And then again, that positive feedback loop continues, okay? So that's number two, setting unrealistic goal. That's the second cause of paralysis. Now, the, the third cause of paralysis and unhappiness as well, you know, as a PhD student or researcher is what I call the perfectionist delusion, perfectionist delusion. So it's basically this idea that, you know, your text, your writing is never good enough to finish it right no matter how many revisions you've done it's still not good enough because it's not perfect but perfection doesn't exist you know and greatness you know or near perfection is created through numerous iterations right so that paper that you see in nature or in the best journal in your field is so good and so great and near perfect not not because you know, it, it, it was like that from the beginning, right? You see the final product, but it went through 10, 20, 30 different iterations. And each of these iterations were a little bit better every single time, right? But it started scrappy. It's, it started bad. You know, it started with mistakes. It started with drafts and then it got better and better and better. Right. So, you know, remember that perfection doesn't really exist. You know, it's just a delusion. And, you know, no matter how good you make something, there'll always be room for improvement. Right. So no matter how good you make your paper, when you submit it to your supervisor or you submit it to a journal, they will always come back with comments because they are paid to comment on your paper. So there will always be comments. Right. So rather than aim for perfection, aim to just be 1% better every single day. Because if you aim for perfection, you will never finish anything and you will always feel inadequate, you know, and you will feel like an imposter and you'll develop anxiety, right? So aim to be 1% better each day rather than aim to be perfect. And remember that like, you know, that being of 1% better every single day, that can lead to exponential growth, right? Because you know, people think that progress is linear, but that's not true. Oftentimes what happens is that it's kind of like a bell curve and progress is exponential. Okay. So think of this graph, you know, if you have progress on the, on the vertical axis, and then you have time on the horizontal axis, right? What usually happens is that for a very long time, we take action and we take action and seemingly we're not making any progress, right? You're writing your paper, you're redrafting it but it's kind of still in the same place. 
And what happens is that a lot of people give up there because they're not prepared to take more action over a longer period of time. But, you know, if you look at this bell curve, there, there is a tipping point at some point where, you know, your progress starts becoming exponential, basically. That's, that's how progress works. So be 1% better every single day rather than aim for perfection and you will achieve success. And then the fourth cause of inaction and why you maybe aren't uh, making as much progress with your papers or your thesis as you would like to is just lack of self-discipline, okay? So, you know, really what I, what I say is that motivation is overrated. If you're waiting for motivation to write your paper, you will never write your paper, right? If I waited for motivation to do these YouTube videos, I would do one YouTube video every two months, you know, when I feel like it. So success is not about relying on motivation. Success is relying on discipline. If you want to publish more papers regularly, you've got to be disciplined to write those papers regularly. You know, don't wait for motivation uh, to come because motivation is completely unpredictable. Like one day I might wake up and I just really feel like, yeah, let's do it. Let's write that paper. But how often do you feel like that? Once a month, if you're lucky, you know, so the difference is that self-discipline can be constant, can be something that you control and can be something that you can develop and it's long lasting. You know, you're not relying on these fleeting emotions, whether you feel like writing or you don't feel right, like writing. You just discipline to do it every single day. Right. So what you want to develop is what I call the ninja self-discipline. OK, you want to become like a like a ninja that is self-discipline. So there are lots of things that, you know, that that you can do. And I'll make another video about ninja self-discipline when it comes to writing papers. But I just want to give you one or two ideas here of what you should do instead rather than rely on your motivation. Well, first of all, you want to design your environment um, for productivity and for writing. So you want to make your environment positive where you feel good about writing you know, but where you also avoid distractions, right? So writing on a noisy train isn't a good idea because you won't be able to concentrate, you know? Often writing in, a, in an office where there are other people is not a good idea either because people will come in and they'll ask you questions. You want to be in a quiet space and you want to design that space so that it helps you to produce more writing. So in another tip, you know, quickly that I would give you is you want to make the good choice, the default choice. So the reason why we struggle to do the difficult thing is because it's, it's difficult and it's not the default choice, but the easier you can make it, the more likely you are to do it. So for example, let's say, you know, you want to write every morning. Well, what you should do is just like leave your, put your laptop to, to sleep with word open with the document that you're going to be working on open and everything else closed no notifications no emails no apps no icons on your desktop nothing so that when you open your laptop in the morning like the default choice is to write because that's the first thing that opens right you don't have to fight distractions right you make the good action the default action and you make it easy to take right so as i said i'll make another video on you know other tips for you know developing ninja self-discipline but basically you want to rely on discipline rather than motivation to take action now if you've enjoyed these tips but you want to work with us um, on a personalized level to really help you to take more action to publish more papers in better journals to write your thesis then book a free one-to-one -one consultation the link to do that is right below this video we're going to get on a one-to-one -one call with you identify the challenges that you have, get clear on your goals, and then propose a simple plan that can help you to achieve those goals faster. And the link to do that is right below this video.